Alright. So we got some shite here. Let's take a look at my shite, shall we? First off, I told Big Nix that I'd show him my skull. So here it is. A tribal skull. I got this like uh, when I was really little, like not realizing what it was at the time. Uh, but evidently it was an ashtray. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I think it's really cool. I enjoy the uh, tribal markings on it. And I use it to like put my crystals and stuff in. It's pretty sweet. And I also wanted to share let's see if we get some more light. How I charge my well, any kind of liquid really, but uh especially uh my beverages my boozy beverages. I will charge them on with magnets. I have a magnet underneath here and various crystals, uh, some nice pyramids, and uh, I use organite. There's an organite pyramid, and then on top is also. An organite pyramid turned upside down. I usually have magnets uh, on top and bottom. And what I notice that does, and I mean, yeah, I can, I can uh, get all new agey and say that it. Gives me higher vibes. That it gives me power and energy. And I mean, yeah, maybe it does. But with Organite specifically, you can um, see for yourself, do little experiments with water, uh, with freezing water. Um, and then especially with uh, kombucha or anything fermented, it will. It will have an effect on those things, and you can witness this for yourself. So what I've noticed with uh, fermented things is um, it speeds up the fermentation process. And what we have here, Camelot Mead. I've been growing my beard out, and it's, I'm looking more like a uh, Viking. So I decided to get some mead in honor of my Viking ancestors. But, uh, okay, what I did with this. And I do this with with uh, any wine that I get as well. Um, I will I will put a little bit of my some kind of ferment that I have going kombucha or a strong ferment that I have going, and put a little bit of that in there, and and then um, further the process of fermentation. Um, and whatever else kind of other kind of effects it has with with all these crystals and organite and whatnot. And on the bottom, I have this uh, organite pendant that is I notice uh, a lot of nice decent effects with this. I mean on the bottom of that, I have taped. Um, if I can get some light. Um, 
I have... I think it's underneath the, of that purple thing. It's um, a flower of life. It's uh, with copper, made out of copper. Because uh, th those energetics are like the flower of life that... Um, a kind of geometry, like sacred geometry, that has a lot of beneficial energy and frequency and harmonics that goes along with that. And then that little purple guy there is called a Tesla plate. Ooh, it's mystical. But uh you can look that up for yourself, the Tesla plates, and uh highly doubt they have much to actually do with Tesla at all. And I'm not for sure if they actually have that much of an effect on stuff. Um, for, for me, with water, uh, the water, after about, I don't know, 5 to 15 minutes, the water does taste crisper to me. So maybe it has kind of similar effects as Organite does. But this ain't cool. And... With this mead, I went ahead and kind of spiced it. Just last minute, I wanted to add some stuff. I, I'm not for sure why. I just felt like doing it. Uh, so I added, what did I add? Uh, sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. Then I added some cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, clove, and then that's kombucha. Some of my saliva, because you always gotta put a piece of yourself in whenever you're, uh, you know, dealing with alchemy. That's that's a major factor. Is uh, that DNA, your own essence, and I also put a little bit of this honey, and this is one of the th things I wanted to share. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see. Anyways, it says Shungite honey. Uh, Cosmicreality.net. I didn't realize it was going to be this little, so I probably won't buy it again. But if, if you don't know about Shungite or the properties of Shungite, uh, definitely research that. Uh, maybe get your hands on some, try it out for yourself, see what kind of effects it has. Uh, I like Shungite a lot. I haven't, I haven't used it all that much, but it does seem to benefit my person, my being, especially being around um, electromagnetic fields and frequencies. Shungite seems to really help ground me and block a lot of uh, nasty energies, regardless of if it's frequencies or uh, thought energy, emotional energy. But this stuff's pretty good. I guess um, I'm not for sure what they how they described it. Like uh, Shungai honey farms or the uh, the bees are surrounded by Shungai or something of this. You can also get some with it's like Shungite powder in it. Then I think I think it said that this was harvested on the, the eclipse as well, which I thought was kind of cool. Just just to see if anything special about it, I guess. All right, let's try this mead. Spiced mead. Oh, Damn.
you haven't had mead or honey wine, it's what mead is basically. It's good shit. Here's another one of my goodies. This is a uh, organite pyramid. It has flecks of gold, a spiral of copper around the bottom. And those black stones, I believe, are... I don't think they're Shungai. I think it's black obsidian and tourmaline. Which is... A necklace I have here. A tourmaline on the bottom. Tourmaline is very good for grounding and also uh, electromagnetic magnetic frequencies blocking those. But yeah, I, I really like this little guy. Fucking noise. And another product. I'm not big on products, but when I do buy some products, I buy the good shit. You know what I'm saying? I fucks around with the good shit. So this good shit, yeah, you won't be able to see. This is Chaga. And and I would agree with uh, the statement that... You know, if it's not something like locally sourced or something close by, close to you, uh, it's not going to be as beneficial. But that's not necessarily to say that uh, you're not going to get benefit from it. Uh, this was Wild Siberian Chaga. And I will go ahead and say that anything that you can get your hands on is from... Uh, parts of Russia, uh, the more remote parts of Russia, the Siberian taiga. Um, people who have homesteads in Russia and are remembering the ways of properly growing and caring for their and harvesting their herbs and spices and fungis. Any any product that you can get that's that's coming from those types of places, that's that's gonna be at such a higher level, like probably the highest quality level that you can get your hands on. And yeah, you can argue for days on end about, you know, this person, this company, such and such has the best stuff. Well, I mean I've done I've done my research. Um, I, I've sampled different things, um, and as far as I'm concerned, from my personal experience, seeds the seeds that you get from these places they're going to be of the purest quality. The herbs that you get are of the purest quality, and I'm really excited to try this chaga. And it's already kind of like crushed up a little bit too, so that's that's cool. Yeah, I recommend, highly recommend Chaga. Uh, do your research on Chaga. And I will go ahead and say that uh, there are many uh, ways to extract the goodies out of Chaga. There's a, like making it with tea. And that's kind of like the the quickest route to go, and probably the most common, the most simplest route. And it, it's a it's a good it's a good way to do it. Then there's the alcohol extraction, and that's going to get um, a little bit deeper and different things. Like each method of extraction is is going to be different depending upon what you're working with. But with chaga. The, from what I've researched and experienced, the number one way is for extraction is is, is fermentation, is, is using um, some kind of a kombucha. If you make a kombucha uh, with your second fermentation process, when you cut off the oxygen, 
um, that's when you put your herbs and stuff in and you then you can put your chaga in there and so you're getting like a water extraction and you know a slight alcohol extraction as well out of this fermentation extraction so I would recommend doing that with your chaga for sure and this this awesomeness is a smoking blend that I got um, specifically for dreams and it has organic catnip I'm not for sure how to pronounce this or really the properties of this this Sincue foil and then Damiana, which I have a little bit of experience with, has a very mellowing, uh, relaxing effect. And then it says Lotus, white, pink, and red. And Lotus is just fantabulous. Um, if you can get, you know, Lotus stamens, uh, just high quality Lotus petals. And um, with that, I would recommend the alcohol extraction, specifically wine. Oh, so. And then it also has marshmallow, uh, mullein, mullein, and mugwort. I got this because I wanted to try some mugwort. So, my experiences with this, with all of those, uh, the first three or four times I used it, um, it was very um, enjoyable very enjoyable I did it right before I went to sleep and I went ahead and blew the smoke like over my pillow and my bedding area too um, it, it did seem to have an effect on my dreams a beneficial effect on my dreams so I would highly recommend this blend from my spiced discounters.com. Good shoit right there. Good shoit. And I guess we'll talk about some of my crystals a little bit. After some more meat, of course. This is really good. I just threw in some of these spices last minute, last second, really. And it's not, I don't know, like, that's just how I've always been with uh, spicing things and uh, mixing things and with alchemy. Uh, I've never really had to go and do a little bit of research, really. Like, and I think it just really comes down to, and I would recommend like good, better, best, the, the best way to uh, do alchemy, do magic, if, if you want to call it that, um, do any kind of mixing or blending, um, whatever you're working with, uh, liquids or drinks or different kind of foods or dishes. Um, experiments with well, many different kinds of things but the most important thing and this is kind of as with anything is to really tap into your body tap into what feels the best and with food and with spices pay attention to the effect that it has whenever you smell something whenever you take in the ethers your, your body, your the intelligence of the body is going to let you know immediately if this is something that you need or not. So regardless of, you know, if you think you want something or you're, you have an inkling towards a certain spice or herb, Take in a little bit of that and, and see how your body reacts. And then and then gauge with the reaction of the body, gauge how much of that you, you add into to your dish or, or your 
whatever you're making, creating, alchemizing. So yeah, I just threw in some things here. I didn't make it that much, that spiced, but this this is uh, fantastic. And mead, mead by itself is, is fucking fantastic. And usually I wouldn't have fucked with it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I just went with the moment as as you know what else can we do? Go with our intuitions and remember how to listen to the body. That is magic. This is a bloodstone pyramid. And I really like this one. I really like it. It's so magical and the energy is just mm, superb. No. But like any of the darker stones, you know, it's gonna be I don't like to use the words chakras, chakra system, just because of uh the ideologies that has uh, corrupted the truth in the reality of the situations. But the darker stones are basically going to be for the lower chakras, they're going to be grounding, and the lighter colored stones are going to be more for, you know, as you work your way up your spine or your chakra system, going to be more towards the mental, the spiritual. So bloodstone is good for the blood. It's good for grounding. It's good for a protect. It's a protection stone. And with all my stones, I pretty much have them on my bed, and a lot of them I have above my head as well. All of my organite I have above my head, and then along the side of my bed I have different colored stones and then at the very bottom I have a a obsidian sphere I don't think this is sunstone this is some kind of a golden quartz Anything golden like that is going to be good for the mind, good for tapping into uh, truth and purity. A shout. And then this little guy, I don't know the exact name of this little quartz guy, but it looks like a skull, kind of like a little miniature skull. And if you can see inside of it at all, it has like a really cool things going on inside of it but I I meditate with that one quite a bit blue kyanite powerful stuff this is the sunstone This is another little like organite pyramid. It has a uh, like a mandala inside of it with copper. And yeah, it's gotten a little dinged up. Until it's been used for show. That one's pretty cool. I lost my light. And then this one is just amethyst. I have an amethyst sphere as well. I have a lot of spheres. I'll, I'll show off more of my stuff sometime. It's just. Uh, once you go through that, I don't want to call it a stage. Because, I mean, yeah, like you can. You can Definitely benefit 
from uh, the stuff, uh, and you can definitely get caught in a lot of new agey stuff and a lot of just anything in life. You can get caught. Um, so I, I just I always recommend like like the saying I, I say is like you know, that's good, but don't stop there. Like keep going in your investigations and your experiences. Like it's a path. And you just you're supposed to continue. This is a tiger's eye sphere. Which for me is Uh, it, it resonates very strongly with me, like the tiger's eye stone, the energetics there. This little guy is called... I don't know how to pronounce it really. Uh, C-H-A-R-O-I-T-E. Cheroit. I don't know. Uh, with purple, it's a lot like amethyst. It's gonna be have to do with the head and the crown chakra. This one is called Seraphonite. And Seraphonite's very badass. Uh, I think of like Seraphim. Okay, I see how it is. That's the light. So be it. So be it. Yeah, I got my Viking beard, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, you can see it pretty good there. It's supposed to be like a pretty angelic stone. It kind of looks like uh, wings. Seraphim, that's the shit. This is a car carnelian egg. Carnelian is the stone. And like I just mentioned, with the deeper, darker colors, it's going to be attributed to your lower systems, energy systems. And the red is going to be a little bit more fiery as well, with the root chakra. I'm clearing that. This is a pretty sweet one. In the shape of it, it's pretty cool. It's called a uh, septarian. I think this one kind of has to do with. Uh, I, I used to be, you know. Yeah, I could tell you like uh, uh, the metaphysical properties of, of just about every uh, crystal and stone. And that was some years back, and so the information is still there. It's just uh, I haven't been that interactive with that as much as what I used to be with the stones and stuff. So you would think this is more like. A grounding one and then the yellow it's probably like a calcite and it has to do with uh, like, kind of like the solar plexus chakra um, but I think they say that this is good for uh, communication and rose quartz good for the heart opening up uh, love Definitely highly recommend Rose Quartz. I think I've showed this off in a previous one. Yeah. Shungite Honey. 
so good, who needs me? Good shit. And get a better look at my skull. Do you like my skull, Big Nicks? I like it. Selenite. Uh, I'm just going to pull something out of my ass. Maybe Chalcedony. Could be. I know this is... Hmm, ah, the Melody Stone. He has like seven, seven different stones or something in it. Yeah, this one's this one's nice. It's very nice. Nope. I believe. Hmm. I want to say sodalites. But then it kind of looks like a lapis lazuli as well, so it could be that. I have I have a couple lapis lazuli spheres. And those are fucking awesome to hold to your temple temples. They are the shits. All right, now I want to do a little bit of tarot. I haven't done tarot in a while. Oh, and another one of my products that I acquired is some sage. I oh, was running low on sage. I wanted to do some clearing in my apartment. <sighs> Definitely get yourself some sage. See what memories it brings up. Uh, it's gonna be different for everyone, but for me, it's it's very deep, uh, very deep remembrances when I smell sage, um, burning and not burning, just smelling the herb. Very powerful stuff. I got my Mystic Merlinite Sphere, which I just keep with my tarot deck. I, I kind of, hmm, I could use it more. But it serves its purpose. And Santo Pelo. I keep with my tarot as well. Which smells like sage right now. 
very cleansing. So first I'm just going to do three Actually, no, because this is already 34 minutes. So I don't want to make it all that long. So, I'm going to draw some cards for some people. And. If I left you out, I'm sorry. Please don't take offense. Please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. If you want me to draw you a card sometime out of this deck, it's the World Spirit Tarot. It's the only deck I have. It's the only deck I've ever used, I think. Uh, just send me a message or ask for one or how many you want. I can do that for you. So first up, uh, let's just go ahead and do one for Zen Atman. Cause why not? I'm just gonna do one for each each of these people. Then I'll read from that little booklet I got.